Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going over Q2 of the bi weekly contest 45, maximum sum, uh, maximum absolute sum of any subarray. So, this one, the prerequisite I would say for this problem is just Cadane's algorithm. Um, and for that, it is just uh, ignoring the maximum, oh, sorry, ignoring the absolute part of this problem, uh, just maximum sum of any subarray. I think it's I mean, it's, it's definitely a lead code problem. So if you struggle with this problem, uh, look for that problem and go through that problem and try to solve it itself. Uh, the, the solution is, it like the explanation for that problem is, um, it's kind of tricky, to be honest, uh, if you're a beginner, because it, it almost is some somewhat of a trivia of like, either you know it or you don't, because if you don't, um, it's really hard to come up with yourself, I think, to be honest. Um, without like a little bit of help. So definitely go through that problem and go, um, you know, make sure you understand that. And once you have that as a fundamental, which I think, to be honest, a lot of people have, so, but but that said, again, it is trivial. So if you don't get it, it's okay to go back and like read up on it and learn it because there's really no easy way to do it, to prove it on yourself, especially during an interview, right? You think of it as a, a blessing that allows you to, to, to kind of explore the problem. And once you have gotten Cadane's algorithm, and let me kind of just put it on screen. Well, that's, I actually labeled it during the contest correct. Uh, Cadane's algorithm. Uh, once you kind of Google that and kind of do more research and, and solve the code problems on it, um, then this problem is, the difference between that problem and this problem is that you have to look at look up the absolute sum of any subarray, um, which is just the absolute value of the components. Um, and for that, for me, it, it just becomes two problems, right? One is the the regular usual Cadane's algorithm. Um, and then the second one is using Cadane's algorithm, but the negative version of it. Um, you could also phrase it another way. Instead of getting the max, you have the minimum because um, the minimum would be the the negative value, which has the, the you know, which when you absolute, uh, when you use the absolute function on it, the, the minimum value will become the maximum value, right? So you could kind of think of it either um, in either way, but in those cases, the implementation is a little bit, uh, or they're very similar. Uh, this is just Cadane's algorithm. Uh, I actually know it off my head again, because it is a little bit of a trivia. You could kind of do proofs yourself, but it, I, I think it's really hard to kind of come up with if you don't already know it, to be honest. So definitely uh, do do your research on it. And once you do that, I just take the max of two values where I want contains on the input or contain on the negative version of the input where, you know, we just cast everything to the negative and then we get the max of, of that. Um, and yeah, and Cadane is both, um, you could think of it as both greedy or dynamic programming depending on the proof. So yeah. Um, in terms of complexity, this is going to be linear time because Cadane's algorithm, you could kind of look at it and reason that it is linear time, right? Um, because um, because we just look at each element once uh, for each version of Cadane and we use all of one extra space. So this is going to be, um, you know, for, for one core is going to be constant space, linear time. And then the second core is also the same. Um, you can also debate that because uh, um, in, in that I actually don't, mm, I think in this generator, um, if you make sure that this is a generator, this actually does only all of one extra space. Um, but it, it, I actually don't know necessarily how Python parses this. But if you're very careful about um, you know, or you could rewrite the function in a minor way to handle negative now or ha handle to reverse it, then um, then you could get this to all of one space as well, and then. O of n um, running time because again you look at the array element once so for every element you look at every element twice because uh, you want it you want this algorithm twice and assuming that you just use a generator or something smart to make sure that um, you don't create you know linear extra space by by this um, and in different languages you may have different things like changing things in place or something like that or using again a generator type thing um, but yeah so the optimal would di for this would be linear time, uh, constant space, and that's optimal because that's just the lower bound, right? Uh, because you can't really do be uh, better than that. Um, so yeah, um, that's all I have for this problem. Uh, you can watch me solve it live during the contest next. But, oh, my computer was slow. Okay. Oh, hmm.
to have to be at least one a little possibly empty okay Hey, uh, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, let me know what you think about this problem, any, anything at all. I uh, hope you had a great contest. Uh, and, you know, as I always say, stay safe, stay healthy, um, you know, to good mental health and take care of yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.